welcome everyone to this week's Two Guys and Some Horror. Oh, do we have a treat for you. In this time right now, this time of quarantine, we bring you Train to Busan from 2016, which is actually um, a zombie outbreak film as well. So it's really exciting. Um, I love this movie. Um, I know Clark likes this movie a lot as well. Who is our esteemed co-host of the show? Uh, Clark, how you doing, buddy? Doing well, man. How are you? Doing good. I just finished this movie about an hour ago. How about you? About the same. Um, I actually hate this movie. It's terrible. Um, first of all, they were on a train for quite a bit of it, and I didn't expect that from the title. And no, no, no. It's, this is a great film. It's a great film. <laughs> and they 10. didn't even go to uh, Busan. They didn't even go to Busan. Yeah. So for those of you that may not know, uh, the story is pretty, pretty simple. Um, a mysterious virus breaks out across the country. Um, people that are infected turn into murderous undead. There's a few terrified uh, travelers, which a few is double quote, air quoted. Um, that find themselves trapped on a bullet train from hell and they just have to fight for their lives um, as the dead just keep on coming after them and it's it's quite terrifying um, I, I I well, told movie... Clark two minutes ago that I really don't know how to talk about this movie and I think Clark laid it out very beautifully um, so I don't know if you want to recap what you said but I thought you did a really I good mean... job I could, I could, I can explain that too. Yeah, never. I'm not going to do that. No, not at all. Yeah, I. This this film is a is a drama. It's it's about a it's about a father who. He works really hard, to support his daughter and his ex girlfriend or wife, and this this daughter is kind of estranged from him because he works so much as a hedge fund manager. So this is his his coming to story of becoming a good parent as well as a good person. And all the other characters along the way have stories and, and kind of perspectives. And this movie isn't so much a, a zombie film as it is just kind of a movie about people being actually people. Every, every character is relatable in some way, shape or form. And they really display that through, great acting and pretty decent direction i agree it um, yeah, and, it it threw me yeah. for a loop the first time i watched it because i'm not a big fan um of subtitles um not that i don't like to read um, i love reading and i love watching movies when i actually sit down to watch a movie and um, i could totally handle films with subtitles but usually, in my busy life, I'm watching movies. You don't movies. want to focus. Exactly. They're I'm nice. watching movies that I can just put on on the background. And if, it, if it's interesting, it will catch my eye. Um, and when I watched this movie for the first time, uh, probably a year and a half ago, that's exactly what happened. Like I was so enthralled in the movie that I had to stop what I was doing and watch this movie and read these subtitles and pay attention to the character building and the story that's being told. Um, and for me, that's just rough. That's just really hard. But it also tells you something about the movie. It proves that it's, um, you know, of high caliber. It's it's a pretty big, big deal. It's a good movie. I don't think you would like this movie half as much if it were dubbed. The emotion Honestly, wouldn't be in the voice acting. That's for sure. That's the exact. That's the exact issue with like. Yeah. I am a purist. I prefer subtitles, not because I, I I think I'm better than people, but because like you don't really see the emotion unless it's the original actor. Yeah. Like they had a portrayal they wanted to give, and you lose that. I know that kind of sounds a little douchey, but yeah. well, you'll you'll lose. I mean, so you have you have a father who has a struggling relationship between himself and his daughter, as you mentioned, but then the father also clearly has a struggling relationship between him and the mother of his daughter who, um, as I believe his mother tells him, 
is his wife and that he needs to work on that relationship, right? So you don't know, it's not just, you know, this, this guy is clearly a businessman, a working man who's trying to provide a good life for his family, uh, regardless of the time that he has to take away from his family at the same time. He, you know, he's trying to provide for them, but not be around them all the time it's not like a choice it's just well this is what i have to do because i want to provide it's just sad um right and 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 to make it even sadder <laughs> like it's the daughter's birthday is the next day after we meet the the family right the daughter's birthday is the next day and all she wants to do is go see her mom i mean she's even willing to go alone on a train and go see her mother because that's how much she wants to see her own mom. And the dad is just, you know, at first he's very against that because obvious reasons. He doesn't want her to get hurt, lost, uh, kidnapped, you know, you name it. He, he's got his dad wore your hat on for sure. Right. Man, this, and it, I mean, this movie goes from zero to 60 real fast. Hmm. No, it, it definitely does. I well, in it, it, it kind of starts out slow though. Like there's a slow crawl. So like, kind of what you're saying with with the start of this dad kind of building up this whole, hey, I'm a working I'm a working dad, and I gotta earn money for my kid, and my kid and I, well, we're not as attached as I kind of wish we were, and I just rather work to get more money. And then he'll take her to the thing. And the daughter's like, no, nah, fuck you. I'm going to do this thing. And he's like, no, you're not going to do it on your own. You're coming with me. I mean, yeah, he doesn't even and, show and up yeah. for her, you know, her singing recital or whatever in class. He yeah, no, he doesn't. Into that. He doesn't show up for anything. He's he's not connected. He works. And that's, what, that's his life right now is his job. Because his daughter is his life and he's really working for her future. Uh, but at the same time, he, he's a little misguided. And that's kind of what the movie showcases. My favorite character gets introduced, um, like right, right when the outbreak kind of happens, and he he's the best character in the film. He's he's a father of this unborn child, and he's with his his wife or his girlfriend or whomever the character is, uh, Song Hua. Uh, he he's just the best character, Curtis. I'm just going to have to tell you that right now. I, I agree, actually, with you in this case, in this movie. Um, I think in most cases, you, you agree with me. He's I hate your opinion. Um, just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I really do like his character, though. I, I like the... His morality level is, um, to me, very high. Um, he's not just looking out for himself. He's looking out for everybody else. And, I mean, he's the main reason why the dad... I think learns to put others before himself, if that makes sense. Yeah. I think the dad watching him sacrifice himself time and time again um, really helps change his perspective on life. Yeah. That Ultimately, guy was kind of a... He was a tough guy. He didn't take any shit. He was just like, oh, yeah, you're going to close the door on me? Maybe I should throw you out there, huh? What do you think of that? And then his life's like, don't do that and he's like fine i won't yeah <laughs> but no he he gave he gave the main the the hero not the hero the the lead a lot of shit okay i'm yeah. gonna okay so yeah su Senghua, this guy the hero of the movie and then you have the main character uh who is just a piece of shit he's just a piece of shit you're not supposed to like him. He's an uptight, kind of doesn't have his priority straight type of guy is what the movie's trying to deliver. And then you have this family man who's just like this regal badass who'll punch the shit out of zombies. Uh, just kind of like show him up and say, hey, you're, you're a piece of shit and this is why. Let me show you how to live a better life. Let me show you how to be a man. To him. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. No, no. He was kind of a dick in some ways too, but no favorite character. Yeah. I don't, uh, besides, I don't the think old lady. I don't think you'd ever call him a dick. That's the best part. It's like you'd watch what he's doing, oh, and I you're would. like, no, he's right. I I wouldn't call him a dick. I would just be like, no, you're just you're just telling it how it is. You know, you're just you're just Those showing. Because you're telling him like it is. 
doesn't mean you can't be a dick about it. I know. You're being a dick about it. I know. You could have done it differently. What's that quote? Um, there's a couple of them that come to mind. It's not. It's not what you're saying. It's cocky, how you man. say it. <laughs> he was. He was pulling. He was like. He was. Op- he was man spreading and just showcasing things he didn't need to. <laughs> the Big Lebowski, right? The dude. The dude. He, yeah. So he has a quote when he's like, um, "You're not wrong, Walter. You're just an asshole." <laughs> And it's like, no, I mean, Walter's right. What he's saying is right, but he's just an asshole and he's being a dick about yeah. it. No, I totally, I totally get it. Now, let's get back to, you started to talk about the old lady. Because you've nonstop right. chatted me about this old lady since we finished watching the movie. First Sorry, of you, all, you broke up right she's there. the best character in the movie for many reasons. Okay. She is the, the heartwarming, she is the martyr, she is the hero of the film. In many ways, in other ways, she is also the angel of death. This lady, she, uh, she, she's like, you see her in the very first scene, she's like trying to give her friend an egg. And her friend's like, I don't want that. Just, no, you eat it. She's like, oh, you, you always get hungry, eat the egg. And she's like, oh my goddamn egg. And like, that was adorable for me. When they put little things in there to kind of showcase the personality of the characters, like, perfect. And they reused that the same characters throughout this movie. She shows up again, and then near the end, she kind of, she runs to help other people as well, and people are kind of getting scared, and I kind of want to talk about the scene a little bit mm-hmm. more in depth later, so I'm kind of not going to get into it, but she she essentially saves the day. She had a very small role, but she was, she had a heart of gold. Best character. Okay. I like that. Best character, but not your favorite character. No, Copy. no, my well, she's my she's my favorite character. Okay, like I have two favorite characters. I'm allowed. Ooh, Ooh I like it. Saucy. Um, yeah, I, I'm just, I'm just gonna stick with my one. I'm gonna stick with my one. That's all right, man. So, I the character I despise the most in this movie is the damn C E uh, C O O. Of the train company. Every single time it felt like our characters were going to get out safely. He had to muck something up to save, to try and save his own neck. What's your opinion on the COO? Okay, so there are the three lead, or three leads in the movie, I feel, in terms of how this movie is actually working out. You have the main character who is kind of leading on the side of the CEO at the start. And then you have uh, Songhua, who is kind of the, the hero of the story, the man who's got just like kind of like the Japanese guts kind of guy. He's just got an iron will and he's strong and he does not, he's not scared of anything. Uh, and he just does the right thing based off of his own, his own judgment and morals. And I kind of feel like there's the, I me. Mean, you have one of them's kind of like the moral villain and the other one's the moral hero. And you have the main character kind of teeter between the two. And I feel like that's, that's kind of just there to set the tone. I don't know. Like a little out there, but I kind of feel like, yeah, he, he was a douche and he had his role and he was there to kind of the pivotal moment where the main character decides to become a hero was kind of there as the antithesis of his choice he had to make like this is who the main character could have been okay i really i really liked um i don't know i really liked the way the homeless man just kind of kept popping up (laughs) you know you think in the very beginning of the movie when they're on the they get on the train and it starts to take off and there's all of this rambunction kind of happening around everything but not on the train yet you have this young girl who gets in who's injured um and she kind of falls into the train even and then you have a man who kind of tattletales and is like hey some you know someone who looked shady got on the train or whatever and they go and they investigate the bathroom but it's i'm i'm you know 
A year and a half later, Curtis forgets what's going on again. I'm thinking that they're going to stumble across the girl and all of the craziness is going to ensue. But no, it's the homeless man in the bathroom and they don't want him in that bathroom. They want him in a different bathroom. It's just like, I didn't even notice somebody stumbled in the train. Honestly, that's that's a good catch. That must have happened pretty quickly because maybe I looked away at that scene. But I did. Yeah. I thought the same thing. I thought the bathroom was going to be where the zombie showed up, but no, it was it was interesting because as soon as, as soon as you see the person kind of stumbling and then fall on the ground, you're like, oh, I know what's coming. Mm-hmm. And it's a very slow crawl from that point before the outbreak happens. Yeah, but, oh, man, when it picks up speed, it picks up speed. Because they're going from the front of the train. They're running to the back of the train, right, from the inside. Right. And as they go, they're just exponentially causing everyone else to turn. You get, oh, geez, it's it's... So I try to, I try to keep count. They turn fast too. Yeah, I try to keep count of, of all of the the deaths in this movie, and uh, I I couldn't. There's just too many. So I wouldn't. So I cheated. I wouldn't bother. I watched a kill count video, um, which I love those guys on YouTube. They're amazing. Check them out. And um, 164 is what they counted total. That includes all you know, all regular deaths, people being trampled. Um, dead bodies that are just laying around already from whatever government, uh, military aftermath had already happened and whatnot. Um, it, it's just, it's just insane. It's just crazy. Um, my wife kept walking in today while I was watching it and she just kept asking me like every time she came in. She, so the first time she goes in, she goes, what are you watching? And I go train to Busan. And she goes, why are you watching it? It looks so creepy. And I go, it's for the podcast we're recording today. And she goes, oh, okay. And then she walks out. Uh, half hour, 45 minutes, maybe comes by. She comes back in again. She goes, You're still watching this creepy movie? I go, yeah, I mean, I got to finish it. It's for the podcast. And she goes, yeah, but why are you watching it? I'm like, it's just zombies. It's nothing crazy. And she goes, yeah, but like with everything that's going on right now, do you really want to watch something like this? And I go, first of all, the coronavirus so far hasn't turned anyone into a virus or into a zombie. You just died. <laughs> so I can safely watch this movie and go, this is not what's currently happening outside. Are there similarities? I mean, sure. Like a quarantine, but that's about it so far. Everything's going to be a too soon moment for a lot of people though. I don't, I don't really like this is, this is getting political for me right now. Oh no. I'm, I'm, I'm offended. I'm offended that I'm not allowed to watch zombie movies during the coronavirus outbreak. I I'm gonna say... <laughs> no, like yeah, no. I get I get her point, man. Like I I get what she's saying. Like it's, it's it's, you know, it's topical. The zombie outbreak right now. It's essentially what we're doing. We're trying to avoid getting other people sick or infected in some way, shape, or form. But instead, I kind of feel like right now we have the ability to show how much how altruistic we are versus kind of there's people trying to bite each other and they're holding the door shut so nobody can get inside so they get to busan so they get to busan this uh the father character in his progression the hero he he gets bit near the end big heroic like last people are trying to block them out from getting inside because you know it's mob mentality like we don't want to die let them die so we can live because we're scared and there's a bunch of fucking zombies over there so and that's all the COO's fault. Hero gets bit. Main character takes the other people. They break through one of the doors. They all get saved. Uh, hero, other hero, the old lady, kind of comes in to help out. And then we completely lose the hero of the story. Yeah. The dad ends up getting bitten on the escape, right? So when they get to Busan... He thinks about his daughter, and he sacrifices himself literally by leaving the train and becoming a zombie. That that was when I text you, this movie is so sad. Right. That is the, that is the ending for me. Like, at that point, you can cut the movie and just stop. You don't need the rest. You don't need to know what happens to the daughter. 
or the pregnant woman. Nope. Um, I think I don't care what happens to the other survivors. Just that, that should have been the end for me. I like, mean, that, that's one I'll that would have been, next time. Uh, I think that would have been a better ending to be honest. Um, you know, there's a lot of movies that we feel that way about. And, uh, unfortunately that isn't the ending. Um, but for us, that is well, the, ending. the the night of the living dead, the ending, you know what I'm talking about? Uh, no, night of the living expanded. dead, like the mob, the mob comes by the house and they say, they see, they're like, Oh, there's a zombie in the house and they shoot the main character who survives in the head. And then they throw him on the pile and they burn his body. Uh, yeah. Like this was the inverse. And I was just like, oh, they're copying this movie's end. Okay, now never mind. Korea has military that won't shoot women and children because they're, they're better than everyone else. And they kind of, I don't know. It was, it was a little hammy to me. I'm like, like nah. Yeah, I, 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 the I feel you. I, I think that, like you said, the the appropriate ending, the best ending, in my opinion, is, in our opinion, I should say, is when the dad gets bit on the train and has that moment of transition between he's still human and he's turning into a zombie, eyes go white, and the last thing that he gets, the last memory he has, is the day that he held his daughter for the first time after she was born. That was... To me, that was top notch. That's where it should have ended. I agree, a hundred percent. Anything else you want yeah. to talk about with Train to Busan? Um, good movie. I I don't think I don't think I'm gonna watch it again. Uh, it it's it's a soap opera. I, it's good. Like the acting is great. The direction is fantastic. It just happens to have zombies in it. I don't want to watch. I don't want to be sad. I don't want to be depressed. I don't want to go watch it again. But it was great. It was really good. Just depressing. Yeah. I will echo your thoughts. I feel the same way. I definitely feel like my mood dropped tremendously after I watched it. <laughs> mm-hmm. So I'm glad we talked a well, little bit before we spirits. recorded. I'm glad we talked before we you know, recorded. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know what might make you feel better? What? Well, let's talk about fun facts and trivia. Fun facts and trivia. Okay, so I don't have a lot either because there isn't a lot. Um, But I try to do some digging and find some good stuff. And what I have found are these four fun facts and trivia. Number one, Train to Busan is the sixth highest growing domestic film of all time in South Korea. Now, I don't know a lot of South Korea films. I don't know how many there are. I really don't. But if this is sixth and it's, you know, South Korea is pumping out movies like the U.S., that's amazing. If they're even pumping so out. The, go ahead. Train to, train to Busan's like, dude, there are a lot of popular South Korean films, okay. uh, especially uh, uh, you have Snowpiercer, right? Uh, Snowpiercer, no. Oh, you haven't. That movie no. is completely in English and it's South Korean. And it's I've fantastic. heard many good things about it, but haven't had the time to watch it yet. Uh, there was that one movie that won an Oscar this year that, that was a South Korean film. Parasite? Parasite, yeah. Haven't seen that yet either, but it's on the list. All right. Yeah, so that's, I mean, I thought that was really cool, uh, a really cool fact. Um, number two, the actor, and I'm going to butcher names. This is so sad. Dong Seok Ma. The man with the pregnant wife used to be Yu Gong's personal trainer. I thought that was really cool. Um, number three, the no, words. Yeah, oh, obviously, yeah. two of them are best friends. <laughs> um, number three, the word "zombie" is only mentioned once in this in this film. Um, and number four, Yu Gong, the dad, was actually born in Busan. Yeah, well, that that's not surprising, dude. Busan's a very uh, populated city. Well, thanks for raining on my fun facts and trivia. Gosh. You know, I, I didn't mean to ruin it. I mean to ruin it. I, you know what? You know what? I'm sorry. 
I ruin everything. Park <laughs> ruiner of things. Yeah, every party needs a pooper. I thought that's why I was invited. Every party needs uh, a pooper. You know, guys, with, with that awkwardness, it's time to leave a plug here. Curtis likes to leave fun little tidbits in our Twitter. He does live tweets every once in a while. You can follow us on Twitter and participate in our polls and all of that great stuff that, uh, you know, we kind of enjoy, enjoy doing. We do this for fun. And uh, that's at the number two guys horror pod. You can follow us also on Instagram with that same name. Also feel free to leave any feedback or if you want to guest or if you want to be in an episode with us and talk about one of your favorite horror movies, feel free to send us an email at two guys and some horror at gmail.com. And that is completely spelled out. And you know, we just, uh, I want to say that I think all of you are very attractive and I want to hold your hand and tell you that you are special. All right. Later. Bye guys. That is probably the sweetest thing I've ever heard Clark say. Thanks, man. And on that note, we'll see you guys next week for Dun Dun Dun. I'm not telling you. If you thought I was going to tell you, I'm not telling you. It's always a surprise. What are we doing, dude? What are we watching? We're doing the <laughs> beep. That's what, what we're doing. What the fuck does that mean?